Put your glasses up, put your glasses up, a toast to me. So the Kanye West interview with Drink Champs was very interesting. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it thoroughly. I thought brother was in rare form. I thought he was inspiring, motivating, encouraging, and uh, informative. Definitely informative. And this interview rubbed some people the wrong way. And I can see why. But, man, I thought it was a breath of fresh air to have someone give an interview at his level, his height of stardom, to be so transparent. Man, you're just not going to get that transparency from your your typical celebrity. Um, And for the most part, Kanye has always been that way. Uh, And that's what has uh, driven some people uh, angry or dissatisfied with them. That drives people to call them crazy. And, uh, yeah, I want to deal with that for a minute, calling people crazy. You know, that's uh, that's a low-level observation, really. It really is a low-level observation. and. When you do that, you cut off any room to understand, to learn that person, uh, the perspective of that person. You try to marginalize them, uh, minimize what they're saying, their impact by calling them crazy. And you call them crazy because you don't want to take the time to understand and because you're stuck in your way of thinking and because that person has uh, stepped out of the line of of, of, uh, the line that the crowd is in. They've moved themselves, removed themselves from the crowd and they have their own independent thought, which is quite different than yours. Uh, we we label them crazy, man. That's so dismissive, and uh, and on a level, on some level, ignorant, and not ignorant, uh, meaning stupid, but ignorant and just not knowing, not knowing or trying to get an understanding. That's that's the crime, I think. That's the sin, is not trying to get an understanding of one another, and uh, being so quick to be dismissive of one another. Man, this interview ran over two hours, I believe, close to three hours. And the interviewers, Nori and EFN, DJ EFN, man, typically, man, usually I I can't, I can't really listen to them for too long. Uh, But I try not to be dismissive. I try to understand uh, their perspective and why they do what they do. And it, it, it's difficult or challenging for me to listen to them for an ex- extended period of time because I think Nori, he's, he said this, he has ADHD uh, or ADD, I'm not sure, uh, but I think DJ EFN has it too, to an extent. And uh, what I don't like, what was challenging is listening to them cut off their guest and their guests could be uh, delivering uh, a deep point, expounded on a point, and they'll cut them off, or the guests will lose a uh, train of thought by them cutting them off, and then never come back. And a lot of times he says, I'm, gonna, I'm cutting you off. Excuse me, cutting you off. But I want to touch on this, and we'll get back to that. But they never get back to the thought the, uh, the guest was expressing. And I'd be so into this thought and listening to what they're saying and they get cut off and they never get back to it. I'm like, man, that, that's frustrating. And so uh, in this interview, he did a great job. He did a he did a much better job of listening. He did still cut him off uh, a couple of times, but it wasn't as much as it usually is. So I don't know 
uh, if uh, his awareness was heightened or someone had a talk with him. But he has to know people are saying this in the comments, I would think. I mean, you got to be self-aware to an extent, even if it's something you struggle with. Uh, it's good to uh, put your finger on the pulse of the viewers and supporters to see what are they saying. Uh, and that's what the consensus is. That's what most people are saying uh, throughout you know, the tenure of his, his uh, podcast that he cuts off people with his, uh, his attention span is very short. Uh, so I try to be understanding to that, but it is frustrating, brother. It is, it is frustrating. But he did a much better job. And uh, I won't go into everything Kanye discussed in this sit down, but uh, I want to touch on a few things that, that really stood out. Um, This brother, the first thing I want to say, family, family. And uh, he said, and I'm not quoting him verbatim, but he said, we need to get back to building a foundation, a strong foundation for our children. Uh, he alluded to how he's, he doesn't agree with his, his kids having nannies. That we be we need to be more of a community, close knit community, to where the grandmother is babysitting, and we're not paying somebody to love our children. The love is going to be natural coming from a grandmother. It's going to be a different kind of love and a different kind of protection and provision when there's a blood connection, and I'm not paying a nanny a stranger. Uh, a professional to uh, care for my children. Uh, now, I know that's probably 1% or 2% of the nation who have nannies, but we send our kids to daycare all the time. I mean, we send kids, we send our children to daycare, man. Man, before they're a year old, three, six months old, man, think about that. Think about the bonding that could be that could be uh, molded and cultivated by that child being connected to the mother or even the grandmother uh, for the first four or five years of their life. Um, so, yeah, man, we're, we're messing up. We're messing up these kids at birth. Uh, the public school system. You know, I've, I've, I've always saw the public school system as a babysitter. I don't look to them to really educate my children, uh, that's not that's not what they're there for, really. They're really there to uh, train your children to uh, get in line, to follow, to go with the herd, to be sheep. That's what the public school system is about. Uh, they're not trying to teach your children to be independent thinkers uh, because you get suspended or expelled for any rebellion any independent thought, if you challenge uh, the staff, teachers, intellectually, just not, not physically, but just intellectually, even in a respectful way, in a respectful manner, you can be reprimanded in the public school system, uh, especially if other children or other students are around listening. You will be reprimanded for even intellectually challenging the system. So, yeah, independent thought is frowned upon. Uh, so that's a form of babysitting to me. And so, yeah, we got to get back to the community, you know, to start raising healthy kids. Uh, another thing with community he mentioned, he said, hey, he said, I don't, I don't read well. I don't like reading contracts. I'm not good at numbers. But he's a visionary. He's a creator. He said, I get people, I put people in place that do those things well. Uh, he said, because we're a community. And, you know, now I do believe it's good, it's good to know uh, a bit of something in everything connected to 
your art or your creativity, your product, your service. Even if you know you're not an expertise at this thing, but if it's connected to your business, you need to be in the know on a certain level of what's going on and what it takes to get things done. Um, you can't be totally ignorant to the fact of that discipline. But no one's going to be a master at everything. So it takes a community. Like he said, he's an earner, but he doesn't do these things well. But he knows how to earn. He's a visionary. He's a creator. So other people are in place. The community is in place with competent people to make this, to drive this machine. And that's what it takes, man. We, we got to, you know, bring down the ego just a little bit and have some, to have some emotional intelligence and say, hey, I do this well, but I don't do these things well. And my brothers, my sisters, they do these things well. Let's come together. We each have to say that. We each have to take on uh, that, that, uh, that challenge of lowering the ego just a bit so we can come together and be a powerful force. And that's all about community again. Uh, and the thing that stops us is ego. It's ego. We got to let the ego. Well, I'm not saying let the ego go because the ego gets a bad connotation. But we, we have to temper. We have to manage it. And the ego, it can be great. Ego can be a great thing if it's managed properly. It can be toxic. It can be poison if it's not managed properly. And I think he did a great job of trying to manage his ego. He did. Uh, he was transparent about uh, that he's not always obedient, that he messes up. He even said uh, he was jealous of Virgil. You know, Virgil uh, used to work for Kanye uh, in, his, uh, in, uh, in, a, in a designer uh, faction uh, or position. Um, Kanye had a meeting with Louis Vuitton, which uh, uh, Virgil was there. Kanye turned down the deal. He didn't, he didn't want the deal. He didn't want the opportunity, I believe. But uh, what I've heard is that, you know, Virgil went behind Kanye's back and took the deal. And instead of saying, hey, man, I'm riding with you, I'm rocking with you. Uh, he took the deal with Louis Vuitton. And Kanye felt the way about that, and, and maybe rightfully so, but he admitted he was jealous uh, that uh, Virgil had that opportunity. Man, it takes a lot of strength. It takes a lot of humility and self-awareness to say you were jealous. And I don't know. I don't know if I've heard someone say they were jealous uh, admit to it. I've heard other people say people were jealous of them or someone else. I, I don't believe I've heard someone admit they were jealous. Maybe I have. Maybe it's just been far in between. Um, yeah, yeah, so it takes a lot of humility, man. Like I said, self-awareness. But on the flip side, he was very critical of people he felt like uh, were disloyal to him. Big Sean. You know, uh, John Legend, Common, Talib Kweli. You know, he was very vocal and direct about how he felt these brothers uh, being disloyal and uh, siding with the Dems, Democrats, to attack him. Uh, but he would come back around and say, "But I love these brothers." But you know, basically, I gotta, I gotta chastise them. But I love them. Um, so I think he did a great job in this interview of balancing the ego. You know, uh, I got, I personally have no problem with people being arrogant, like never in my life, but I've been called arrogant throughout my life. Um, but I have no problem. I think if you want to reach greatness, there has to be a, a level of arrogance and then it has to be a level of, uh, Humility, uh, but you have to feel you're worthy, that you're good enough, 
that you will conquer whatever you set out to do. That's, you know, when you come off as arrogant. And that's just what it is. And I have no problem. Uh, what I do have a problem with uh, is people directly making other people feel like they're not worth that they're less than, you know, but if I feel good about me and that offends you because how I feel about me, I'm not attacking you. I'm just big enough me and you feel a way about that. That's your issue. That's not my issue. But if my arrogance, arrogance is telling you that you're not good enough, that you're not worthy, that's a totally different thing. You know, that's dangerous, that's darkness, that's toxicity. And uh, yeah, I don't rock with that. But, you know, we can go into a bunch in this interview, man. He talked about the chakras, um, the 808 beats, man, frequency, and how it lures your, your vibration. Um, I won't really get into that. Maybe I'll dig into that another day. But um, I love the way he digged up Dave that. You know, he said a thousand, thousand percent day is a better CEO uh, than Jay-Z. And I thought that was honorable. You know, uh, the drink chefs play this game where they compare two people in the same in the same round, in the same discipline. And they asked who was the best CEO, Dame or Jay. He, he said Dame. You know, he said Dame. Uh, emphatically, he said Dame. So uh, I, I dug that. I dug that. He said he's both of them. He's Dave with money. He's Dave and Jay. And I, I think when he says he's both of them, from Dave is the Dave side of him. He's saying he's a he's a visionary. Uh, Jay's side, he's a creator. Man, when you're a visionary and a creator, when those things come together, and uh, Manifest. That's what you get. You get Kanye West, man. You get wealth, uh, and not just money. You know, they spoke on that. You know, true wealth is relationships, and man, that's true wealth. The right relationships is true. True wealth, and the wrong relationships is true poverty. Um. You want to be connected to people that are doing better than you. You know, you don't want to be the person who's always the top dog because you're not growing. You're not being challenged. You can't look ahead and see someone else who's doing it better and they're pushing you, non-verbally pushing you to do better because you're seeing they're doing I know it's difficult, man. We got these childhood friends. We we got these uh these friends we've known for a while. We got friends that we just vibe with or like their personality. But man, if you surround yourself with enough people that are not doing better than you, you'll never grow. Um your vision will be limited. And that's again about community. And so uh you know, he named uh, did a lot of name drop, Elon Musk and uh, a lot of other names, man. I, I can't remember. You know, but you know, he said these are his peers, but he's definitely motivated by these guys, and, and that's what it's about, man. Surrounding yourself with the right people, the right community, and I gotta, I gotta say, man, for the last, for the last two three years, uh, I've been doing that. I've been uh, surrounding myself or my energy and their energy has been drawn to each other. People who are doing better than me, people who are able to create opportunities for me. You know, for years, I was the guy who had all the ideas who would create opportunities for people, but nobody could look out for me and create an opportunity for me. And, and so that's that's changing in the last two or three years. That's been changing. Um, that's a beautiful thing, man. Uh, and that's again tempering the ego, being comfortable being around people who are doing better than you. 
It's all about tempering the ego. Don't kill the ego. This ego is needed. It's needed, but we got to manage it. Got to try to balance it uh, to fulfill our purpose. Yeah, but I, I really enjoyed this interview. Like I said, I can go on and on. I probably could do a six-part Kanye West uh, segment. But, yeah, I just wanted to point out just a few things. And I may be forgetting some things. I may come back on and touch on some things. But I dug this interview. I think it was needed. It was perfect timing. And... You know, we need to protect this brother and cause, because he kept saying, hey, man, they're going to kill me after this interview. And I know why. And, and and maybe it was tongue in cheek and maybe it was serious. But I understand why he said that because he's going against the status quo. He's the guy who's jumped out of the crowd and doing his own thing with independent thought. He did that. And uh, the powers that be do not dig that. They don't dig that. So I wouldn't be surprised if some scandal popped up out of nowhere, some Me Too scandal or, or whatever the case. Uh, it would not surprise me. But, you know, it would be kind of predictable too. So I don't know. You know, maybe it'd be just easier knocking them off. Maybe they, they, they think that way, opposed to, you know, creating some scandal, some fabricated scandal. So uh, let me know what you think, man. Check out that interview on Drink Champs with Kanye West. But uh, I enjoyed it. I think you will, too. As always, peace, love.